So Houston, we have a problem, a problem with the judge who has been assigned to preside over Donald Trump's federal criminal trial. The good news is we also have a solution because there's a federal statute for that. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, the biggest, most consequential criminal case in our nation's history is presently pending down in Florida. Now let me hasten to add, it will soon become the second most consequential case in our nation's history once Donald Trump is indicted for the January 6th insurrection, and he will be. But presently, the classified documents case is the most consequential case because it is the first case brought against a criminal former president of the United States for compromising our national security. And at the moment, we have a problem. That problem is the presiding judge, Judge Aileen Cannon. Now, there is a great new piece in the Washington Post by columnist Jennifer Rubin. I'll put a link to Ms. Rubin's piece in the description for this video. And I want to use her piece as a jumping off point for today's Justice Matters discussion. Headline, Aileen Cannon should not preside over the Trump trial. Nine words that pretty succinctly sum up the problem. That article begins, Democracy defenders and advocates of the rule of law were elated when the indictment of former President Donald Trump was unsealed, revealing a damning array of evidence that should finally vindicate the principle that the law applies to presidents and ex-presidents just as it does to all other Americans. Elation was tempered, however, when Judge Aileen Cannon's name appeared on court documents. She infamously botched a civil case brought by Trump to recover the very same documents now at issue in the criminal case, a decision by Judge Cannon so lacking in logic and precedent that the U.S. Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit swiftly repudiated her ruling and sent Trump packing. The 11th Circuit's ruling was particularly dismissive in reversing Cannon, quote, the law is clear. We cannot write a rule that allows any subject of a search warrant to block government investigations after the execution of the warrant, nor can we write a rule that allows only former presidents to do so. Specifically, the panel held she didn't have jurisdiction and should not have ruled on the case. To make matters worse, in the civil case, Cannon posited that Trump deserved special treatment because he's a former president, quote, as a function of plaintiff's former position as president of the United States, the stigma associated with the subject seizure is in a league of its own, close quote. A judge who begins with the unconstitutional premise that Trump is not subject to the law like any other defendant would have a hard time sustaining public faith in the process. Any rulings for Trump would be regarded as evidence of her bias. Rulings against Trump would be seen as efforts to restore her shattered reputation. Because Judge Cannon seemed to be leaning over backward and or operating untethered to basic criminal procedure, some lawyers have questioned if she should recuse herself under the U.S. Code that requires a judge to disqualify himself in any proceeding in which his impartiality might reasonably be questioned. So friends, let's start with the federal law, the federal law that disqualifies Judge Aileen Cannon from this case, the law that requires Judge Cannon to remove herself from the case or be removed. That law can be found at 28 United States Code section 455, and it reads as follows. 
any judge of the United States shall disqualify himself, I'm going to add or herself, shall disqualify himself or herself in any proceeding in which their impartiality might reasonably be questioned. So friends, this one is, to use a legal term, a no-brainer. Okay, technically that's not a legal term. But in this very matter, involving these very documents, the documents that now form the basis in part of the prosecution of Donald Trump, Judge Cannon was found by the appellate court to have abused her discretion. She was found by the appellate court to have interfered in a Department of Justice criminal investigation, interfered to the extreme advantage of Donald Trump. The 11th Circuit Court of Appeals raked her over the coals for exercising jurisdiction over a case where she had no authority to do so. In other words, she shouldn't even have been in the game. You know, friends, judges sometimes get it wrong, but they don't often get it lawless, as Judge Cannon did. And now, as a result of Judge Cannon's abuse of discretion, helping Donald Trump in a way the law did not allow, legal experts left, right, and center are reasonably questioning her impartiality. And that's the precise circumstance in the federal law that disqualifies her, that requires her to remove herself from the case or be removed. You know, importantly, the, the law does not require that there be proof that she can't be impartial, just that there are circumstances that result in her impartiality reasonably being questioned. And that is precisely where we find ourselves. Her impartiality can and is reasonably being questioned. So it's time for Judge Cannon to remove herself from the case. And if she doesn't, Jack Smith and his prosecutors should file a motion to remove her. Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.